投资有很多不同的类型和方法，不同类型往往背道而驰，即使是同一类型，实际操作也会因人而异。所以一定要很清楚自己在做什么，不要随便听一句一知半解就以为是一切。价值投资并不是世界上唯一一种可赚钱的方法，大部分人以为逢低必买，即使股价大跌，只要套牢实，打死不卖自己就是在价值投资。然后在网上不同的平台寻找共鸣，反映了他们根本不了解自己在做什么。不过，即使是不同方法，也会有一些共同点。今天就让我们听听巴菲特和芒格怎么说吧。Hello, Warren, Charlie. My name is Matt Peterson. I'm a shareholder from Seattle, Washington, and it is a true pleasure being here today. My question for you is simple.、Uh, the two of you have had a, many great opportunities throughout your years to work with. Many fine mentors and teachers, and I'm wondering if you could provide us with a few names of some present-day mentors that we may look to for advice and uh, and uh, our own ways to approach problems and situations. People similar to the、uh, Grams and the Fishers of the present day. Well, the interesting thing you don't have to look at. The present-day ones necessarily. I mean, if you wanted to look at great business careers, you could look at Tom Murphy or Don Keogh on our board, and you could learn everything you could learn about being an outstanding business person by just studying them. And you don't have to study somebody that's that's that is 55 and currently in some executive position. Their lessons are are timeless. And there's going to be a study. I think the Harvard Business. Somebody sent it to me from the Harvard Business、uh, School, you know, on Cap Cities. But there's been others in the past. And you know, if you learn the lessons of Tom Murphy, you don't need to learn any other lessons in terms of business. And I would say, if you learn the invest lessons of certain investors in the past, you know, you don't need to worry about a contemporary example, Charlie. Well, I think it's also true that Warren and I are not following very well. The forty-year-old investment professionals, isn't that right? Are you hiding something from、no. me? I didn't know there were any forty-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they're all twenty-five now. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, you know, the, the, the investing is not that is really not complicated. I mean, the, the the basic framework for it is simple. Now, then you. You have to work at it some to find the best pockets of of、uh, undervaluation, maybe or something. But you didn't have to have a you didn't have to have a high IQ. You didn't have to have lots of investment smarts to buy junk bonds in 2002, or even to do some of the stuff that was available when LTCM got in trouble. You really just had to have sort of the courage of your convictions. You had to have the willingness. To do something when everybody else was petrified, and but that was true in 1974 when you know we were buying stocks at very, very, very low multiples of earnings. It wasn't that anybody didn't didn't know that they were cheap; they were just paralyzed for one reason or another. And and、uh, you know that the lesson of following logic rather than emotion, you know, is something that. Obvious, and some people have great trouble with it, and others have less trouble. Charlie, can you give me any more help? <laughs> well, I think this is different. When we were young, we had way less competition than you people have now. There weren't very many smart people in the investment management field. There really weren't, and and. You should have seen the people who were in the bank trust departments. I mean, so now we've got armies of brilliant young people and all these private partnerships and all these proprietary desks and all the big investment banks. It's a, and we've got a vast amount of talent in the investment management business. So, and there's a lot of competition. If there were suddenly a crisis now, there would be. Five hundred firms that would be studying it intensely, each having capital that they could commit on a hair trigger. In our day, we would frequently be all alone. But in two thousand, we'd be the only buyer. We'd be the only buyer. 
But in 2002, Charlie, there were tons of people that had investment experience and high IQs and lots of money was around. Wasn't any question about money. It's just they were terrified of that particular arena. Well, when you have a huge convulsion, which is like a big fire in this auditorium right now, you know, you get a lot of weird behavior. And if you, <laughs> and if you can, particularly at the head table, <laughs> and, and, and if you can be wise when everybody else is going crazy, sure there will still be opportunities, but that may give you a long dull stretches if that's your strategy. Three years ago, two, three years ago, you could find a number of securities in Korea, population fifty million, advanced society. Strong balance sheets, strong industry positions, at three or so times earnings. Now, but that took a convulsion to create that. A well, real, a big convulsion. Yeah, but the convulsion happened three or four years earlier, or five, five years earlier, and plenty of smart people in Korea in the investment business. Plenty of smart people here scouring. The information was all available. You 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 can. You can go to the internet and get information about Korean companies that's just as good as you get up from the SEC. And there they were, dozens of companies at very, very, very cheap prices. Now, where, did, were all, where are all these smart people and with all this money? <laughs> it did happen, but if I asked you to name 20 more like it, you would have great difficulty. <laughs>